For the 3D game kit, they use a system for the camera called Cinema Machine, or Cin Machine. It's going to be up on the menus. You'll see this one right here. We have the option to create a lot of different type, from 2D uh, cameras to a mixing and blending to dolly systems, uh, a whole bunch of different ways to actually use it. If you're using it in a brand new project and you want to actually download it, it's available inside of Windows down at Package Manager. If you click on Package Manager, you'll see it's available inside of your standard packages, Cinema Machine, right here. Bottom right, it'll say Install if you, if you don't have it installed, and then you can remove if you have it installed. Go ahead and close this one. Inside of our scene, our level one, if you go into Camera Rig, inside of Camera Rig is going to be an option called Camera Brain. Camera Brain is what Cinema Machine is going to call the camera. There is a single camera inside the scene, which will be updated and um, evaluated based on different brain types within the scene for how it blends and controls. If you scroll down, you'll see the main camera uh, brain right here. You have a Cinema Machine camera brain. Very basic in terms of what it does is it's looking for the things to tell it what to do. So each thing is going to say, um, tell it for instance, we're going to look for a keyboard and mouse for a free look. Well, inside of here, we have one called Cinema Machine free look. Remember, that's going to be Cinema Machine up here. We have a free look camera component assigned to just simply a, uh, a blank and empty game object. If you notice, the game object is just simply way over here on the scene on the side. What this is going to do is tell it what to do for the camera. So what we want to do for this object, if you go down inside of it, you're going to notice a lot of different properties. These properties all compose the behavior of the camera. So let's go ahead and play for a moment. Now, I'm going to un I'm not going to have this checked to start with so you can see it. So with the camera inside the scene, it follows and we have the up and down and moving around. I'm going to push escape to pause so I can go into my hierarchy. When I click on the keyboard and mouse free look, it's now going to bring up a grid that shows me that I can now adjust and change the point of view. You can do this within this scene and or you can do it directly inside the variables. This is going to just simply control the axis where is the camera looking. For instance, if I wanted to make this move over to this point, then when we play the character, <coughs> the camera is now looking over onto the side instead of looking in the center where the character was before. Okay, so we can do things like that with it. We can also go in here and we can say, for instance, on the uh, instead of the Y axis, we can actually say recentering. Recentering does things so that um, if you don't touch your mouse, uh, it's, the camera is just automatically going to start re, uh, moving the Y axis back to where it was before. So we can say recentering on the Y. We'll close. <laughs> So notice I'm not touching anything, but the camera automatically moves my position back down. So if I move it back up, I wait one second. It takes two seconds to uh, recenter it down. Same thing for the X axis as well. If you go over to your uh, recenter to target heading and you say enabled on this one as well. <laughs> now when I go this way, the camera shoots back around behind the character. There you go. So that's going to just set it up so that in terms of working with a camera, um, you have a few properties you can just jump to to create a very unique camera and a different one for it. All right. Other options that are available inside of here, um, those the timing and the speed of those are all right here available to you. The, uh, uh, the other options, if you go down a little bit further here, um, we have a extensions. Extensions allow you to add a different behaviors to it. So inside of here, if you're wanting to change how it's going to be functioning, you can place that inside of here. We have one that's already looking for a collider. The collider is actually a set of, uh, it's going to be setting a set of layers that it's not going to be able to move through. 
So if it gets to a layer like this, it's going to intelligently not move through the environment. It's not going to move through a player uh, or an enemy. It's going to move around or pull. The strategy for this is pull camera forward right there. You could say the other two options as well if you wanted to try those out. All right, so basic setup for that one. It's a it's a really good system, but it's definitely a large system. Um, I would definitely encourage you just to play with this and kind of have fun with how it works on that. You can also increase the level. So right now we were locked to a very uh, just to a, the uh, the point, so that when you rotated it was a very centered point. You can also take it so that you have it where it's this way, and let me drag this one a little bit further. So now we have a little bit more banding when we go into this view, and then we'll have it where it shoots back into the center view when it recenters. So notice I move this way, and it does that for it. All right, so there we go. Just a couple of different ways you can use it. And then if you if you're not on this uh, keyboard one, if you're just simply on a regular game object, with no object, it'll go back to just the regular view, so you don't see the grid inside of it. So there's a quick look at how some of the camera systems work with a 3D game kit.